disconnect the streaming software, and then I have to recognize it, and then I have to go back. And then we are now live. That's live. A, that's a lot of fire emojis you put on that hat. I know. Too many. Because you're yeah, not a fire like, emoji man. I'm not, so, so this is disingenuous. This is something. Yeah, it's true. This is something that always annoys me when you like tweet because when you're writing the tweet, you can't tell exactly how it's gonna look. Not when you have the, the one fire emoji and then the rest in the next line, like it looks horrible. I might like it's just it's just bad. It looks uneven. Just delete it. <laughs> yeah. Delete it. No, it's a great it's a great take. Just a bad expression of that take. Are we ready? Here we go. Yeah, dude, we're ready. <laughs> Yo, it is another edition of the iOS podcast. I got tired of just doing the like the yo. I, I had to give like. Nah. Something there. We're a week away. Well, here's the real thing. We're a week, week away, away, which is exciting. And I just got tired of the, you know, well, this is boring. So I just booked Dave Dombrowski for the morning show for us. So we right. had something to talk about. You're welcome, everybody. No, yeah, I, yeah. No I big deal. Could not care I'm here, less. I'm here for I hope. So and I, I do. Uh, this is not a shot at uh, Joe DeCamera or John Ritchie or yourself. I don't care what you guys have to say about the Dave Dombrowski interview. <laughs> oh, I yes. care about what I have to say. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, I think everyone does. That's why yeah, I did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I did it so that we could hear what you had yeah, to say. Exactly. You know? Exactly. No one else really cares, Correct. so you're welcome. Correct. It was I'm, fine. It was good. <laughs> He's amazing. I mean, I would like to say that in the history of this this pod, we've had some really great takes. You know, we've nailed some stuff. I mean, we've done some things. You know, got Bryce Harper here, saved Trey Turner's career, all that type right. of stuff. But I think the single, like, most on point we've ever been was when we absolutely adored the Dave Dombrowski hire when it Correct. happened. When we were like, what a hire. Nailed this, gonna turn the franchise around, and we like. I mean, it's almost we can nail it exactly. So best take in the history of the podcast. Good, good job by um, us, man. He's I'm, a I'm really, he's a really good talker. He's that's, a great talker, man. Obvious. Uh, knows how to say something without not saying anything. Yeah, but also giving you enough. Yes. Like it's not one of those things where you're like, you didn't say anything. It's like he gives you something, yeah. but it's 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 smooth, man. Yeah, he's, he's smooth. Very good at this. He's very, very good at good, this. Yes. Um, and yeah, like, uh, I. I the Rojas thing is is one of the biggest takeaways from it. Hey, dude, he went out of his way to mention Rojas, and, and then Joe f- wisely followed up on it. But but in that first answer, he just kept saying, and Rojas, and Rojas. Yeah. Which you were all over. You know, I asked you a, like a month plus ago, you know, do you buy that, that Rojas is, is the guy they want to be the center fielder? And you, you were in on it. Yeah. And it, it's, it's obviously going to be a big, uh, you know, it, it is a gamble, you know. And, and the Rojas thing is interesting because – Again, the 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 three hundred two was probably the the fakest three hundred two yes, I've is. seen in yes. my entire life. Yes, um, we saw what happened in the postseason. I think it's I think you go almost too far worrying about what he did in the postseason. He was in double A to start the year, yeah. and he's tasked with again. He's just batting ninth. Like it it, it, it killed him in Game Seven. Well, it's because of big spots. Big spots. <laughs> it, happens, it, yeah, it really didn't backfire until Game Seven. Yeah. Um. So, and and by the way, we don't. You talked about that uh, the Trey Turner play last pod where you're like the biggest forgotten defensive play ever. That Rojas play against the Braves was was an other. Oh, they might not win the series without that play. You know, we conveniently forget about that. Yeah, listen, um, I'm I'm starting to look back on the 2023 highlights, and, and I I let out a smile. Me too. I let out I, a little I'm bit like, of a smile. I'm like the 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 pain will always be there. I'll always remember yeah, it. Of course. But I'm but I'm 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 not. Over it's the wrong phrase, but, wrong but phrase. I've moved on. You know I've what I mean? On. I moved on to twenty twenty four and I'm I'm very excited. Me too. That's where I'm at. So but but Rojas, it's it's the biggest it reminds me so much and if, if it's funny it's the same position, but a couple years ago when they went to the year and it was like, All right, it's gonna be Hazley, Moniac. <laughs> oh, and like remember that. it just did and they yeah. remember the remember the uh the panic Simone Muziati. Simone uh, Muziati. Was Roman Quinn in there for some, a minute or two? Um, Side dude, Simon Musiati got some plays out there. Yeah, some dude, starts got, out there. I think he made his debut against the Mets because that was when <laughs> that's when Hazley just left in the middle of the yeah, series. Yeah, that was tough. Um, so it, it it reminds me a lot of that that gamble that they're making with Rojas. It feels eerily similar to that. Now the problem, the good part is, is that like the rest is pretty much set. Well, like, also there is a big big difference there in that. He is light years a better fielder than any of those guys you talked yeah. about. Like he is in a he truly value. He is a truly elite center fielder, which yeah. provides on its own, like regardless of the bat, is valuable in a different way than those other guys. Were. Yeah, I think I think they are they are clearly higher on Johan Rojas than I think that the the general public is, and that's usually how teams are with their guys. And and I think the 
the things you see of him bulking up down in uh, mm-hmm. Clearwater is exciting. Uh, the FaceTime him. It's hitting coaches. I know. Getting working. And that stuff's great. It's it's important and it matters. It's just I don't know how much you can do to help pitch recognition. Like I think almost being able to see pitches out of hand is just it, it's you're you're either born with it or you're not. And that's Bryson my, Stott can see a pitch out of the hand. Harper can see a pitch. Well, out of obviously Harper. Castellanos. We're trying to use someone who's a little closer to Rojas. We're trying to, you know, Castellanos not so much. <laughs> not not often. Not yes, so much, uh, but makes up for it with power and doubles mm-hmm. and all that. Where I don't know what I don't know what Johan like is. You just wanted to hit singles, you know. Like it's the the Rojas bet is a big one, but at the same time, you know, I would signing Bellinger would be awesome. You know, it'd be you have Bellinger in center, Marsh in left. A lot of lefties in that. I lineup. was just about to say it's another lefty, it's man. A lot of yeah. lefties. Yeah, but you, and and for what it's worth, Bellinger was great last year, like really great. But his DFA of the year, <laughs> literally DFA. Now hold on, Schwarber was DFA. I know. It's just my point being that you know the big issue, what everyone felt, we all agreed at the end of the season was a lack of contact when you need it. If you're going to pick the biggest thing that fell apart with the Phillies' offense at the end of the season, mm-hmm. or at the end of the playoffs, like. You know, Bellinger is risky in that sense, in that the loopy swing. And look, I know he batted 307 last year. So, you know, and he, and he wasn't as loopy last year. He's won an MVP, but I'm just saying that, it out. I'm saying there's a there's a low a low floor when it comes to Cody Bellinger. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I just it would be fun. It'd be fun. I don't think they're gonna get Cody Bellinger. I think that was um I think that was Boris. Scott Boris, yeah. <laughs> More trying to, you know, spook other teams. Use a little leverage there. A little bit. Um, and look, it's smart not just because they're the Phillies and they spend money, but because we just saw them do this. I mean, the Castellanos deal was two years ago where everyone's like, all right, they've spent their money, whatever, and, and, a, and a great deal, in their opinion, <laughs> fell in their lap and they took it. So yeah. so it's smart. And I guess with the Rojas thing is I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. Now, of course, you could get Bellinger, but I don't think it's the worst idea in the world that you give him the first half of the year, see how he looks, see if the offseason, he made improvements, hitting wise and he's starting to make a little bit more impact on the baseball and if it becomes such an apparent need then the deadline like you know what your thing is you know what i mean so i think they're heading into the season basically saying we have a pretty set roster you know if you want to do the 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 numbers analytics whatever they have a top five rotation a top five bullpen and a top five lineup they don't know what the issue is right now so sure would i like them to correct all the issues and or whatever the the issues they think they have in the offseason but it's also not the craziest thing in the world to go into a year where you don't have an obvious hole, and then at the deadline, that's when you go and, and try to fill that. Yeah, and I think that's what they're doing organizationally. Look, I think that, and Dave alluded to it, you know, he was asked about Montgomery and Snell, I believe Richie asked the question, and you know, he's like, we're not looking to do anything, but hey, you know, if a great deal falls in your lap, it falls in your lap, essentially. So I do believe that, particularly with the pitchers, I think more likely than Bellinger, that if perchance those guys are sitting out there and there's a one year deal, a two year deal to be had, I, you know, which I think more likely with Snell than Montgomery, but they're both still out there. Mm-hmm. I do think the Phillies would jump on something like that, but I, I wouldn't expect it. You know, I'm, I'm not counting on it. No, but the nice part, the nice part about Montgomery is no qualifying offer. So, oh, right. Oh, oh man. You want to talk about <laughs> my dream? Sign someone that doesn't have a qualifying offer, so I don't have to lose a freaking second round pick for the mm-hmm. millionth year in a row. Like that's all I care about. I know. Keep the picks. That's all you care about. Keep the picks. It's your whole thing. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's why this offseason season has been a massive. Have <laughs> 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 not signed anyone with a qualifying yeah, all offer. Your draft picks. That's all I care about. Dombrowski. Um, listen, I I appreciate the answer about Tywin Walker in the in, in, in the interview. Mm-hmm. No, nah, I'm not. It doesn't pass my smell that. Yeah. It, it was a lot like, it was a lot like the Ben Brown and Logan Hoppy are untouchable. untouchable. Yeah. Like, there's no way. Like, if there's, if there's, if there's one thing to upgrade that would be like, oh man, that's like, that takes you to another level. It's, it's, finding a way to, to upgrade that spot. And and look, they could use another arm in the bullpen. Uh, uh, like, Good. you know, I think if you're looking up, I'm not saying that they need it, but they could use it. Michael Rucker. But, yeah, I mean, I, just quickly, I mean, I, I got to do it. We'll get back to Dave. But like, how do you not sign Hector Neris for one year, $9 million? Like, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. That no. That is the most surprising contract that has happened this offseason to me. Like, why did he only get one year, $9 million? Why didn't the Phillies give it to him? Like, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm perplexed by the, the, Nectar, the Hector Neris thing. Like, it makes zero sense to me. The underlying stats are bad. That's why. Whatever. He's a good pitcher. I watch him. 
Oh, you're out on Naris now? Uh, you wanted him in your perfect offseason. We're did. both there. You're, you're out now just because you got a bad deal. You're like, ah, I probably stink. Yeah, right. nah, they'll be, they'll strong be, they're not Naris away from I feel pretty good that that, that one-year $9 million was a good move by the Cubs. Well, the, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, it's not like they've nailed the one-year uh, $9 they're million. They're true, true, but that's why you sign Hector. Do what you don't want to do and sign the guy I want you to. <laughs> we told we we told them we'd help him with that. Hey. He did allude to they were in on Robert Stevens and that's Yes, tough. that was that was very uh, clearly. So project. Jordan Hicks, but I mean just an example of the honesty is he's like, Yeah, we were in on this pitcher, but uh, you know, you got a job to be a starter. It's like so everyone knows you're in on Jordan Hicks. Like that's just clear. And, and that then was he's like, clear. and then the signed on the West Coast. It's just like yeah. so it's Robert Stevens and okay, cool. You got, thank and, you. And the other thing of you're gonna be shocked at how much we offered Yamamoto. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he was <laughs> like, We 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 offer yeah. Yamamoto. Yes, yes. yes. And I believe it was he's right. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it's just there's there's gonna be a. I think they're gonna sign a bullpen guy by the by the end of the offseason. The Maton thing was that that pissed me off more than than Hector. Like six and a half million for a guy who is a soft contact king. Um, it, that hurts a little bit. It just it does feel like they're really. They really are not signing guys. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh. It's just, I feel like that all just hit you in, in one in one well, sentence. I just it just all the I, I saw knew your, they were I saw your face drain. <laughs> You're like they really might not sign anyone. <laughs> Which again, and I am okay. Like again, you made this case, and I I agree with you. I think that you know the roster set, and I do think they have a good roster, and I don't think you know I don't but think it's you need disappointing. to go. Out, but it's disappointing. It of just feels like it just feels like I I wanted more. Dude, what did all right. What did this <laughs> podcast accomplish this offseason? Nothing. We did nothing. We, we did talked nothing. to Preston, and that yeah. was amazing. That it was, was great. a great time. Yeah. Um. You know, like we essentially just sat on our hands. Like yeah. this podcast also <laughs> sat on our hands. Yeah. We had nothing to react. To. We had four straight episodes we called. Nola. Well, this is boring. We got <laughs> Nolan. That's not a shot at Nolan. And no, it's not. But it was also the very first signing of the offseason. So it's like signing, and then it's like nothing. Yeah. Like a, months. But like, like we always say. We could just not record, you know, <laughs> which we've done a couple of times. It's true. But, 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 we're, we're a week away. We're, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's right. That's well, good. Let yeah. bygones be bygones. Good. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, we're back. I do think, to your point, though, I do think they are going in with this, you know, we are going to make moves at the deadline. The last couple of deadlines have been light, comparatively. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they made some moves around the edges, things that helped, and obviously Brandon Marsh was probably the biggest of those in terms of a, a piece of your team. Mm -hmm. But I think they're going into this deadline Going for it, assuming yeah, the, the first half of the season works out. I don't love that. I don't love banking on. I mean, what if it's a situation where a lot of teams in it? There's less people on the market. Like you never know how the the trade deadline is going to play out. So I don't love that as a, as a as a as a philosophy. But it does feel like that's kind of what their mindset is. Yeah, and and, and Dave talked. He even mentioned it. Yeah. yeah, no, and it's it's a it's a fair way to go about it when you don't have something that's like. You know, obvious, and once they signed Nola, like I think Yamamoto, they viewed it as like a once in a lifetime luxury. Twenty five year old, like yep. we'll pay that. You know what I mean? Like we'll pay that. Um, but the only thing giving me hesitancy about that plan is like I've I've felt for the last freaking two years, like where's the Dave Dombrowski trade? Yeah. Like where's the where's the patented push your chips in? Like and maybe that's it why. is wild. He is not. He done has done all. the exact opposite. He's protecting prospects. Oh. He's like building a franchise. Like we always thought he was gonna do. Yeah. He's wild. It's like it really hilarious. is. <laughs> it's the best bit. There's a lot of bits going. It's but a good bit. Dabrowski turning into I'm not trading anyone. Yeah, guy is, is, is a bit. It's a new one. Yeah, it's a new one. Um, so yeah, it's it's it, it's something that um like I just keep waiting for that, and, and maybe that's why I feel like there's been a lot of, and I I like. Mick Abel, but it feels like there's been a more pushing of, eh, hey, he made progress towards the end of the year, like really trying to get him out there as mm -hmm. like not his prospect uh, ranking hasn't fallen that far. Yeah. It's like, I think he's still in the 60s. He's though. still in the 60s at most places, yeah. at least where you look. So. Um, and speaking of that, like this isn't to, to rip the people that cover prospects, but just go watch Aiden Miller. And, 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 and <laughs> yeah, I saw the, him. I, I, he was second on one list I saw. Second? After, I mean, I think he's been, in, he's been in like the 80s. In most no, I'm talking on the Phillies list. I've no, no, seen no, him in second. But in top 100 list, he's mostly been Has in. Has he been on top 100 list? I so mean, that's so good to begin with. He's made a couple of them. I mean, that's impressive. Our good friend Keith Law did put him in there, which I appreciate. Oh, yeah. Good, good job, Keith. Friend of the pod. Friend of the pod. <laughs> yeah. Of the pod. Loved coming on. <laughs> Really had a great time. He has said it. It's his favorite interview he's ever done. Yeah. I've heard him say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a, a, a quick tangent. Very complimentary of him after as well. Oh, no man. disagreements with what he said. So positive. 
so yes, positive. Yes. So warm. <laughs> Ray of shining light. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, you idiot. <laughs> hey, hey, they're not. <laughs> they're not doing that, moron. You pay attention to what, uh, whatever. <laughs> and then they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Uh, by the way, I mean, not a bad time I to trade like, for Nick Vitsko. Yeah, I, I always like when uh, Nick Vitsko. How about that? I always like when we reference things that happened a long time ago on the pod and wonder what percentage of listeners actually know what the hell we're talking about. Or not. I would say, it, I would say, <laughs> I would actually put it at about fifteen to twenty percent. I think it's probably a little higher, but not much. Yeah, twenty-five, thirty. Twenty-five, thirty. So, and so we're doing it just for us and those people. This is good. Kind of started to sound like Meryl there. You got to learn the bits. I did. 25, 30, 35, 40. 25, 30, 35, 40. Oh. Um, Touch that's, that's bad. Meryl. No, it wasn't. Moving good. on. Um, not as bad as what the camera did. Uh, oh, the God virus. It's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, 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 just honestly, it was, it, we should have shut his microphone tough off in the moment. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, tough, tough to listen to. By the way, uh, speaking of the morning show. Yes. I did want to bring this up. Oh, good. On yeah. Podcast. Yeah. What, about Dave Dombrowski that we had him on? Yeah, sure. I don't oh. care about that. No, you don't. No. Um, I uh, am doing a, a bit on the on the afternoon show. Oh, you bit? Yeah. You're doing bits? Uh, you sure about that? Called called Morning Show Side Topic. <laughs> oh, good. That's great. Yeah, That's good. For, because we're giving away uh, prize all uh-huh, uh-huh. so do, doing different a different morning show type oh type so it's a way to to steal a, our bit and do the bit and not and and kind of make fun of us but in reality we're helping you out right. you're doing yeah it's great yesterday that, i did yesterday I, yesterday I did hey 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 what's relaxing <laughs> that's a good one thank you thank yeah you. listening to baseball on the radio listening to high hopes watching golf would you say that high hopes is a relaxing lesson I think it's probably a pretty chill listen. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know, relaxing is a way. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't think me and relaxing can be no. involved in any sort of way. You no. you could be a relaxing listen sometimes. Yeah. Well, I'm not trading away everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when you're not talking about A.J. Brown, you're a pretty relaxing listen. Otherwise, you're the enemy. Believe of the it or state. not, believe it or not, People didn't agree with that one. No, I thought it was pretty funny when the midday show yesterday just did a trade for Patrick Sertan show, and it was like, "Oh, it's fine." No. You're like, "Wait a minute, yeah, what the hell just happened here?" Yeah, <laughs> all pro for all pro. It's, either, a, either it's, it's been a uh, it's been a week a few weeks for you. You've had a, a moment. No, it's awful. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like not having any fun. I could really use Philly season starting. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the thing that I'm most mad at the Phillies for is that like they haven't given me anything to react to. Yeah, right? it's true. So it's like I can't, I can't. You want me to nerd out to to Michael Rucker? No, I don't think like, I don't need to, to do that. Mm-hmm. Not Michael Rucker. Michael Rucker. Yeah, not Darius Rucker. Michael Rucker. There you go. Um, Hootie. Shout out to Hootie. Um, you know who Michael Rucker is? You would recognize. No, I do. You would recognize Michael Rucker. He's in I know Brent Rucker. But I can I just say I freaking love Brent Rucker. I do you follow him on Twitter at all? No. He's a great follow. Like, really, really entertaining stuff. Talks a lot about, like, pitching and uh, people he faced and, like, cities he's been in and stuff. Big Brett Rooker guy over nice. here. Yeah. Well, and now the A's, now Las now Vegas. the A's might not be going to Vegas. So. Now Las Vegas yeah. might be saying, How about we're that? Good. How about that? Yeah, we're all right. That was, that was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, what was I looking at? Oh, Michael Rooker. A picture of Michael Rooker for you. Is he, yes. a, is he an actor? You, yeah, you will recognize him. He is in, he's in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Did you oh. see those? He plays like the pseudo father for, um, Chris, for Chris Pratt. Like the guy this who, might surprise you. This guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. a ton of stuff. This might All surprise rats you. back in the day. I don't watch the, uh, I don't do the Marvel. I know stuff. you didn't. I know you didn't. It was just the most popular <laughs> thing he's been in recently, but he's been in a ton of stuff, Michael Rooker. I know Michael Rooker. Okay. All right, good talk. <laughs> <laughs> not Michael, not to give you Michael Rooker. <laughs> it's a good pod. Good pod. Do you know who Michael Rucker is? Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> deadline. No, but um, <laughs> yeah, they're clearly waiting for the deadline. The Ross thing feels like a big if gamble. If he stinks, do you think people will start calling him Michael? Oh, <laughs> I'm a Tucker guy for a lot growing up. I, yeah, I bet you did. Yeah, I bet you did. Yeah, yeah. I'm shocked. I'm really shocked that high school kids couldn't handle your name being Tucker. <laughs> yeah, when things were going bad yeah, for him. I like that. Uh, Ross Tucker. <laughs> There you go. Who's your, we've reached the point of the pod. What's your top five Tucker? <laughs> Chris Tucker? Ross Tucker? Chris Tucker's a good one. Tucker Bagley? Remember, yeah. Tucker Barnhart? Tucker, Tucker Barnhart? Tucker Barnhart. That's, That's a, a good, good one. Baseball. That's uh, good. Michael Tucker? Mike. Is that a guy? PJ Tucker. PJ Tucker. Tucker. I well, might have made up Michael Tucker. There's probably a Michael Tucker. I think I there's probably of, a Michael Tucker. I was thinking of, you know, I, think of, I was thinking of Michael Turner. The former ah, the former Turner the Burner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a, a Donovan chess bet on me. That's good. Um... I might be all tucked out. Yeah. I might be all tucked tuck, out. Tucked. There you go. That's that might good. be it. That might be it. I think there are others. There's definitely others. There are a couple that I just don't feel like saying. Yeah. 
mean, like, there's one in particular, and I'm just not even gonna say the name. So, okay. yeah. yeah, not a fan. I'll just say that. Kyle Tucker. Kyle, ooh, Kyle Tucker. Kyle Tucker, by the way, helped me win a fantasy championship last year. And his so scrub brother. Huge fan of Kyle Tucker. He's a brother. Yeah. Who? Preston Tucker. Really? There's Cole Tucker too. Well, there's one that's well, on the Well, Cole break. Tucker is the one dating someone famous. No, he's right? married to. Uh, married to someone famous, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, she was in High School Musical. Yes. Uh, uh Vanessa Hudgens. No, Hodge. yeah. is that it? Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Cole Tucker. Yep. There you go. <laughs> hey, good Tucker. Good Tucker. Did people turn this podcast off yet? Is it? I hope so. I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's going down. It's, it's, it's <laughs> slowly, but yeah, it's it's going down. Yeah, that's what I figured. No, that's what I figured. Um, this is for the thirty percenters, <laughs> the twenty percenters, whatever. I actually, we can save it for later. But I do have the top five list for you. Oh no, what? Yeah, I know because it's been a while. I'm I really figured excited. we should bring like actual Phillies content. Yes. To this show. Oh, until we get back to the rather than. than Talking about so David Rowski. All right, so of all the things Rowski said, what's it out to you? Um, uh, Boris definitely asked for an extension, <laughs> and, and Dabrowski <laughs> definitely shot him down. And they were like, "No way!" I mean, he was very. He's like, "Here's what I'll say: Happy Bryce here for the next eight years." Yep. <laughs> Go right, thanks, Dave. Yeah, that was very <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Very interesting. Um, so oh, um, and I didn't realize a rule until I believe uh, Gell wrote about it. So they're gonna sign Wheeler, but it's not. They're not. They can't. They can do it before. But it wouldn't be smart to do it before spring training. How come? Because spring training, if you sign him then, then it doesn't affect this year's luxury tax. Really? That's the. Uh, so they might have a Wheeler deal waiting to go. Exactly. Theoretically, but why would you do it right now? Like, I didn't know that was it. I didn't. Of course, it's a no brainer. Of course. Yeah, I'll find the exact uh, wording the, or whatever. The the exact wording that he did, but yeah, like so that's why it's, it makes sense. Like because you keep waiting for it. Um, yeah, so this is what Gallup wrote. The Phillies are still expected to engage Zach Wheeler on a potential contract extension this spring. By waiting until the spring, a potential new contract would not have luxury tax ramifications in 2024. There are other extension, extension candidates, two of whom agreed salary on uh, Thursday on salaries to avoid arbitration. So, yeah, like if, it, if, if you can wait two weeks. It's like a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you? Absolutely yeah. no-brainer. Yeah. And I guess it's because I guess it, the reason is that it doesn't affect because he's not making more money this year. Is that why they, they put that in there? Because it doesn't affect this year's salary? I would assume so, yeah. And if you do it before then, then it would affect this year's salary. Uh, again, this, you, this is the first I'm hearing of this. Because what, it doesn't, what didn't make sense to me was that you can sign players in spring training, yeah. and it affects this year's luxury tax. Strange. So well, must, especially if it's an extension, because you would think the new money isn't coming until the future. Right. So Strange. I don't get it. Interesting. But um, hey, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Like that signs Zach Wheeler. Now it makes sense. What do you expect year wise for Wheeler? Four. I was thinking four. I mean, obviously, ideally, you're hoping for three, but that probably won't happen. I think he's probably shooting for five. You meet in the middle. Yeah, I don't think like four one thirty, four one forty, something. Like I that. would be not very fun. I agree. Um, four one thirty, four one forty, four four one twenty. Okay, feel about right. Sure. I mean, thirty. I think. He gets a 30, no matter what. I oh, I think he gets, uh, that's my question. It doesn't get higher than 30. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I think 30 is possible. And the good part about Wheeler, and we've talked about this, I think, in, in years past on this podcast, like, he just has that fastball that it's it's weird how some pitchers' arms work, where, like, there's just, Scherzer there's can just pitch, life on it. Scherzer can pitch yeah. when he's 39, and, and now he's breaking down, but still. But Verlander, I mean, we see these guys. Verlander. Yeah. Like, for some and, reason. For power guys. You would always, we always, the old adage, all these guys can change speeds, they can last, whatever. It's, it, you're right. It's been fascinating seeing some of these power. I mean, then look, then there's Nolan Ryan back in the day. Dude, pitch leaves 46. Like, some of these guys just have that type of arm where mm -hmm. they can just throw fastballs forever. Yep. So, and, and the way that his fat, like, even last year, I'd be like, freaking out because he'd be at 95 in the in the in the fourth and it just doesn't really matter like he's got one of the best fastballs in the sport he's got so, life on it yeah. and, and what was encouraging is that in the postseason in the postseason he was still about 95 96 he wasn't back to it wasn't like he ramped up in the postseason and he's he, he put together another all-time kind of run like he's been an unbelievable postseason pitcher for the Phillies so far he's one of the best of my lifetime and it hasn't Philly, it, the it, best it hasn't been a hundred him and like, chilling he got to well and Cole for one year, and Doc, and Doc, yeah, and Doc. We've had some good. We've, we've had some good ones. And Cliff Leonardo. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cliff a... though ruined it the next year, but yeah. yes, or two years, but still. Two years. Two years. Yeah, um, and Doc. Doc was pretty good. Yeah, he's believe it. Or not. Yeah, he's okay. Believe it or not, he's yeah. all right. Um, but yeah, it's just... Wheeler's Wheeler's gonna pitch in more postseasons though. Even... That's the thing. Wheeler's got a chance to really put a, a resume together from postseason for sure. And he and he stepped up a big moment. So, 
Um, yeah, it's just he has one of those fastballs where I just don't worry about it anymore. And like, it is so funny that we're sitting here talking about it, signing him to at 34, I believe he is, right? 34. Like, there's a guy who, when the Phillies signed him, they got him for such a discount because people thought he was just like he couldn't last. Mm-hmm. Like, his first, what, three, four years of his career were a disaster from an injury perspective. And he's come here and just been the, the, the bastion of health. It's, it, it's, it's fascinating. The funniest part about the Wheeler thing and because today is also the five year anniversary of the JT trade. Oh, is I that remember that show? That was fun. It was fun. It was remember they made moves. That was great. Um, <laughs> trades like trades. Where are the trades? Where are the trades? And, oh, man, poor Sexto, man, just has not. I know. never put it together. No, and when he did come up for that oh, moment, he was sick. Like it was electric watching that guy. <laughs> it was electric. Yeah. Um. So so it, it's funny that it feels like Clentac and Ed Wade both have like the same. Like trajectory, like Clint's got God. Yeah, much I think all of Wade. I think Wade more so because Wade. Wade really did draft those guys and whatever. But do like, you, yes, do you want me to get technical on you? Sure, Mike Arbuckle. Mike Arbuckle draft. Dra- I agree with you, okay. Mike Arbuckle. You're absolutely right. Mike Arbuckle did, but Ed Wade's tenure was better than Matt Clentex, I think. But you're right. Look, Clentex kind of put this team. Together. He had no idea. Clentex had no idea how to build a team, but when it came to signings and I mean like the Harper contract and the Wheeler contract are both like the JT trade the JT trade but really just con- you were talking contracts like those are I mean the Wheeler contract is the best contract in my life in Philly sports I think it's arguably I'm forgetting like you know rookie contracts I'm talking like I, know, I'm think. I, I think it's the best in my lifetime and I think it's arguably one of the best baseball contracts of my lifetime five for a hundred for what they got from that guy I mean it's Pretty ridiculous. It's absurd. Or 5120, whatever it was. It's like, it's crazy. He's been a, a $40 million pitcher. And, mm-hmm. and it's like half the price. Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, Klintzak, you know, last year, obviously, this Segura was on the team. He he traded for, for Gene Segura. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Harper signed the JT trade, you know. Wheeler. Uh, I mean, uh, it was an obvious pick at the time, but Bohm was a draft pick by him. Stott, God. a draft pick by him. I mean, you know, and Stott at 14 looks like a really good pick there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? Little Matt Klintzak well, appreciation. Uh, are we going back to King Klintzak? <laughs> Matt Klintzak appreciation? No, never. But, um, yeah, it's just it's just funny looking back. And, and you know, Gillick is so like Dombrowski, except, um, you know, Dombrowski hasn't got it done yet. Yeah, but, but you're right. Comes in with a very similar resume coming in, all that. Find yeah. the right pieces to put together. Now, Dombrowski hasn't found his worth yet, you know. That's true. Like, we, we're, we're, yeah. where, where's the worth? Where's the worth? Marsh, sort of. Kind of, but not really. Not I mean, really. it's not worth. It's not. It's not. I mean, honestly, the best, funny enough, the best move that Dombrowski has made just in terms of value, in terms of, like, what he gave up to get it, sign, whatever, is actually the first move he made. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I think that the... The Clevenger for Alvarado is the single best, you know, uh, give to get that Dombrowski's done since he's been here. Yep. And Which is wild because that was the first move he made. It's funny. The biggest thing that Dombrowski's done is just rounded out the edge of the roster. Yeah. And, well. and uh, the, the biggest thing he's done, if it's what we talked about at the beginning, what we hoped for and what has been proven true, is is creating a winning organization. With mm-hmm. Dombrowski, the, the stuff that, like, on the field he's been fine. Off the field, Dombrowski has been a rock star here. You know, the way he's built this organization up, the way they've taught them how to win, the way he's... Uh, built the infrastructure in the uh, our guys, you know, Brian and and Preston and bringing in all these people in the drafting development, focusing on that, all that stuff, and just bringing a winning culture to Philadelphia. Well, I mean, it's been unbelievable with Dombrowski. And value in the clubhouse, yeah. which I think that's thing. one thing that the more analytically driven organizations. See. That's and, going from Girardi to Thompson. Yeah. You know? And Klintak, that was probably Klintak's biggest downfall. Yeah. Is it just did not care about it. Yeah. And Girardi. I mean, that was a mistake. Yeah. For sure. So, um, you know, a little appreciation, I guess, for for Matt Glenn but still, um, yeah, wasn't expecting that. Well, it's just it's, it's just funny to think about. No, it is. I mean, five years ago was the the, the JT trade. Yeah. Talking about extending Wheeler, like did did good things here. He did. Did You're good right. things here. Yeah. And it was funny enough because I was uh, like a normal person. I was rewatching the 2019 Phillies video year. Before. Oh, total normal, normal move. And. 80, even, 80 win baseball team. Even McCutcheon, 81, was, 80. I think McCutcheon was playing well until until he tore his ACL. Ah, uh, him tore it. That was that's an underrated forget about crappy moment that that submarine the season. Mm-hmm. Now we don't forget about it because we work at WIP, so impossible to forget about that moment. Correct. <laughs> Led to one of the all time moments in the history of the station. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, but yeah, like even like, even McCutcheon signing was the right. I mean, they had a, they got a leadoff hitter that wasn't that was good until he got hurt. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. 
Fun sack. <laughs> you, Never you're done. the world's biggest no, he's the worst. <laughs> he, By the end, he was the worst. But for a moment there, he did some good things. He did. He did. All right, what else from Dombrowski? I thought it was interesting. Again, he's so honest. There are so many little nuggets. Like, him mentioned, like, Schwerber is not playing the outfield at any point. I mean, he was, that was strong. He was like, yeah, Schwerber's knees ain't hanging out there. Like, we can't do this. Just, you know. Well, I think that's why he's gotten off to some slow, slower. Yeah. I mean, he was talking about how much trouble he's having running. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think it's, I think he's had injuries the last couple of years that never became public. You could tell. That, that have kind of hurt him from that standpoint. And listen, if if a whole year at DH, could get it, can I? Bro, can we get like a Schwarb, Schwarb bomb season, baby? Can I get 230? I mean, imagine if you had 230. Oh, you, gosh. Ah. Everyone would just calm down. <laughs> 30 seconds. I know. You know? Um, didn't answer the leadoff hitter question. Kind of was interesting, though, because he said that they were like, Dave, do you have a... I know. And he's like, I do. He's like, I would pick someone, but I'm, you know, so yeah. I thought that was fascinating. I do wonder if they, I do wonder if they try Stott there for at, at least the beginning again uh-huh. um, and, and see how it would And go. why Stott over Turner? Because I think Turner provides value in the two-hole. Mm-hmm. And I think Stott has a more traditional leadoff hitter kind of mold. I mean, Harper has to bat third. Like, none of this Harper batting fourth. Like, uh, no, I'd rather he bat first than third. And I don't want him batting first. But I'm saying, like, Harper has to hit in the first inning, in my opinion, every day, mm-hmm. no matter what. So, I mean, look, I we've talked about this. I think the lefty-righty thing is incredibly overrated. To your point that you've made many times, I do think it matters late in innings to not have too many lefties in a row. But I think the the I think Rob Thompson goes a little overboard with the right lefty thing. But look, if he wants to do it, which he does, you know, Stott, Turner Harper makes a lot of sense at the top of the lineup. And the only problem with Turner at leadoff is like who bets to? Well, you yeah. have to Harper. That's and the point. And I don't want that. I agree. I'm just saying but again, or you don't have to go righty lefty, but whatever, you know, whatever. Ah, uh, well, who would you put to then if you went righty righty? I wouldn't. I would. I would bet Schwarber lead off. No, I know. Yeah, and I would go. I would go Schwarber, Turner, Harper as my top three. Yeah, what I would do personally. But if not, I would rather go Stott, Turner, Harper. I wouldn't put Turner one. I'm just throwing it out there because you mentioned it. So would I mention Turner? Yeah. Well, because I, again, I think Stott will eventually be a lead off hitter here, and I think he. Would, I think he's gonna be good at it. I just. I kind of. I do want to see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know that. Listen, I. I am a Schwarber lead off defender. Forever, mm-hmm. you know, I, I understand the value that he provides. Um, and again, how he wants to do it very clearly, correct? You know, so, which matters. Again, I, that was, I think that we had Jim Salisbury on last week. Great to hear, Jim. Oh, yeah. Love you, Jim. Love Jim. Um, but he was talking about, you know, he's like one of the things that Rob Thompson is best at is knowing what his players need from him and kind of understanding the the uh, you know the mind of the player and the psyche of the player. And he's like, Kyle Schwerber likes batting leadoff, man. Like, he thinks he loves starting the game off. He loves put one in the seats. He loves the roar of the crowd. Like, it's like, gets him going. Like, it is something that Kyle Schwerber is a better player at leadoff because he wants to do it and he's excited to do it and all that. And that is the kind of thing where you have to, you know, it's not the only reason to put him there, but it is the kind of stuff that we don't know on the outside that does need to be taken into account. Uh, of course. So, listen, if, he, if he's there game one, I'll be I'll be happy. Be good with it. Um, it's just, yeah, I think eventually Stott will do it. And, you know, curious to see how it does. I agree. And look, I, I think he'd be great at it. I just, he just needs to walk a little bit more. Hmm? Seriously, to get there. I mean, because he has such amazing plate recognition, the ability to put the bat on the ball as well as anyone, maybe outside of Luis Arias that we've yep. seen right now. Um, but he does need to take a few more walks. If you want to be a classic prototypical leadoff hitter, there are spots where you know, maybe a few more walks. Uh, the answer on Panner was not surprising. I, I, did you, I was, what, what's going on with everyone online being like, what? No. It's like, really? dude. We all knew this. Yeah, now like this, the they said it, it immediately. They're like, 2025, guys. Like, you know, you never know. Between, like, I thought that was, I was very surprised by the reaction to that answer. And I don't know why. I don't either. <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't that was very clear. Wasn't like, I saw prominent people tweeting out, like, what? I know. Like, okay. um, yeah, but it's things about Painter, obviously. Yeah. And Look, he'll be we're back We're ready soon. for that guy. Yeah. The funny part is he's made 22 when he, <laughs> when he I know. Was, I know. Well, he was 19 when he, exactly. That's the point. He's 19. Like, again, I don't think people understand 22-year-olds reaching the majors, that's still young. Like, that's still super young to reach the majors. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's not. And look, it's the kind of thing where, you know, as weird as it is these days with these pitchers, you, you almost expect them to have to get Tommy John at some point. It's almost like a, a you know, I don't want to say a rite of passage, but almost a, a just a necessary evil with the with the amount of, with how high velocity has gotten, with the torque on these arms. Like, arms are not supposed to do this. You know, it's almost gotten to the point where, you know, you're almost surprised if someone doesn't get Tommy John, you know, in the first five, six years of their career or whatever. Yeah, which stinks. It stinks, of course, but it's like, get it now. I'm fine with it. You know, like, you know, 
just have to hope. This stronger, is stronger again. album moving forward. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. I mean, look, Shohei, you know, he's got it again. You know, yeah, it's, it's it tough. Yeah, it stinks. Not for us. Do you think the Dodgers? The Dodger. Are they? <laughs> if they don't do it this year, it'll be the it'll be an all time all time all time. Right? It surpasses the last year's Mets. I mean, like they. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, even though it's funny, which it makes the last year's Mets thing that much funnier, is that how much more money last year's Mets spent than what the Dodgers spent this year? Because that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the last year's Mets. I mean, they've spent five hundred million dollars. Some which is ridiculous. Ridiculous. But um. Yeah, it's like the Dodgers didn't just go out and get Shoei. They went out and got Yamamoto. They went out and got Glass now. They went out, like, I mean, they've just gone, like, they went and got Teoscar. It's it's almost, it's to, especially in an offseason where that's the thing. Like, we're sitting here being like, oh, the Phillies didn't do anything. It's been so quiet. No, no one's one done it. anything. I no mean, one did anything. Like, there, there are a lot of teams that have done one move. The Yankees went and got Soto. They haven't done anything else. Like, all these teams, like, so it's just the Dodgers. It's just the Dodgers have gone out and done everything. And if they don't do it, I mean, holy it'll be cow. it'll be about as big an embarrassment of a of a. But again, that's the thing. Like, if there's a sport other than hockey where you're not guaranteed to do it, it's just because you got talent. It's baseball. Yeah, you know, like the Braves have been better than the Phillies the last two years. Guess what? They lost the Phillies in the playoffs two years in a row. Yeah. So it's just what it is. Yeah. So, man, one week away. One week away. Let's go. Yeah. One of these. Finally did it. We finally made it to the office. <laughs> we finally made it. Yeah. Jeez. Now we are getting very excited for pitchers and catchers. Yeah. Just a little ways away from actual baseball games being played, but we're on the End way. End of February. End of February. We're getting when there. March hits. We're it's, getting there. It's baseball month. Oh. Baseball month. Yes! Um. So we need to start petitioning Rod to send us to London, our boss Rod Lagan. Correct. This is an important thing. I feel like we're slacking. Do we, do we bring Tucker to I'm already going. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Tucker, let's replace that letter. All right. Ucker. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As I think. Yep. You're just, he's like a, helping Way there. to be a me guy. I know. Did you did you try and help get us to go? Or yeah. did you no, just go? No, I didn't. Your, yeah. Not at all. I just assumed you had the connections. Yeah. yeah you would think. I, I thought go, the morning I, show in the so afternoon would already say be this. sent. Yep. I'm thinking about this. That even if we don't get sent by the station, I might go. Like, uh, Emily wants to go. Like, I'm thinking I might just take the week off and go to London. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, this, we're, we're Phillies in London, man. I know. I'm thinking about it. Plus, you're, you're big. Uh, you seem like a big London guy. I, I, I'm not a, not a London guy. I've been. I was 12, so it's been a while since I've gone. Yeah. But, so I'm not really gone. You know, I need to go. You in London. Elliot in Brazil. Yes, I'm a bit of an Anglophile. You could say that. Sure. Some, Peter, my brother, is like Mr. Anglophile. I I don't know someone who loves England. Oh, like a like a a francophile is someone who loves France. Never heard those before. No. Okay. Well, an anglophile is someone who loves English, British culture, English stuff, all that type of stuff. I'm not really an anglophile. Like I hate the crown. I hate all the the Uh, crowns. Awful. Out on all that. Oh, anything to do with the royal family. I'm fully out on. You know, just could be more. Yeah. You know, Dave Shaw. Dave Shaw fully in. (laughs) Could not be more in on. Hamels is going now. Oh really? Yeah, so Hamilton Notley hanging out? Oh. Ah, oh. I would love to go. I'd love to go. We gotta make this happen. I don't know. We don't we'll see. Happen. We'll see. But we'll be at opening day. Will we? I don't know. I mean, assume I assume we're gonna be so. at opening day. <laughs> Better be. I Listen, mean, I'll be in spring training in a month. Man. Yeah. Do you know when you're going? Yes. Okay. So do we. A month. A month today. Oh, exactly. So you're going early and yes. We're going. I think we're in middle of March. So nice. either. Way. Yeah. That'll be fun. I can't wait. I'm excited. So it's going to be awesome. All right, we got anything else? Yeah, I feel like my take back. Oh, be, yeah, take back. I can be my top it. five. There we go. Oh, 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 this is called producing. <laughs> well, do you do that? I haven't put together a top five in so long, you know? So I almost I, forgot what to do. I, I know you're Mr. Host Guy now. It's like you never even produce. I know. I know. I miss my drop board. I have seen some, uh, I'll just say embarrassing top fives in your stead. Oh, yeah. You know I mean, just no some, one knows how to do it. Some tragic, tragic. Yes. You have 10 minutes of radio, but that's fine. Yeah. Well, it's all about making it funny. I know. Yes. Oh, it makes fun. Yes, it is. The most important Phillies in 2024 Ooh. for them to win the division. Do the thing. And be, yes. And be yes. Good. Okay. I think there's no doubt about it. Rojas is one. Absolutely. Like, cannot be. He can't. He can't be one. He's the biggest question mark in the lineup heading in this. He can't be one fifty hitter guy. Can't be just defense. He can't then, be two twenty hitter guy. Uh, and that's the line. He can be two twenty. That's the line. He can be two twenty. Two twenty with like five homers. Yeah. Yeah. And they can't all be off pitchers. Yeah, yeah. He the knows. one ball that Johan Ross has ever crushed. No, he, he, went off he the hit bat. two homers, but the other one, that one barely got out. The yeah, one that was an op of, opposite field. It home barely run. got out. The one off the pitcher, he smoked that, and then yeah. a, it was hilarious. I would, I would have thrown the ball. Imagine off. having to apologize after hitting your first major league home run. Counted. I know. It should not, it should not have counted. counted. Yeah. yeah. He was like, "I'm sorry." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, off a hitter. I kept saying off a hitter. 
No, I know. I said, I said yeah. the, the other yeah. day on the air, I was like, yeah, Yohan Rojas has first home run off a pitcher. I, was like, <laughs> I know, I did the same. I just did that. I was like, what do you mean? And I was like, You've been a hitter oh, pitching, right. a hitter pitching. Sorry, yes. Um, that was pretty obvious. It was very obvious. Uh, I think two is Kirk Ring. I think everyone yeah, else good pretty much has. That's very good. Because he could be the closer. Yeah. Right? And Dave said that. That was interesting, too, because they asked, do you have a closer? And he's like, you know, that's not my decision, but. Like, we don't. <laughs> it's like, it could be a bunch of guys. But he did throw Kirk in there. He's like, yeah, I can see Kirk in getting a few saves. Like, that kind of thing. So I feel like by May, he's going to be the player. I think so, too. I think that he'll, he'll – because I think they like having Alvarado work around. I think they like Sir Anthony to be able to, to jump around. I'm curious about – like, Hoffman was so good. So good. Can he do that again? I, well, dude, it's he, – he's as big a question mark as anyone in the sense that – I mean, how many times have we seen guys have a freaking awesome bullpen year and then just not be good the next year? It happens all the time. I mean, Sir Anthony wasn't even good this year. So, like, I, look, he was awesome last year, and I'm not going to doubt that, that he could be awesome again, but I certainly can't. I'm not sure of it. Yeah. I'm excited about him, but, it, you know. It's we'll a little, see. like, uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, Tyler Matzik. Sure. With the Braves. It was, like, ridiculous. He's, like, the best lefty reliever mm-hmm. in postseason. Mm-hmm. Then it was I barely pitched since. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm really curious about Hoffman because he's just good. Like that's a he was awesome. It, oh, it's a game changer, it. totally. Especially because they need a right hand and arm that they can count on in that part of the baseball game. Game one, NLDS. Not enough. Ra- not enough. Not enough righties we can count on the bullpen. What we always thought would happen. Yes. Hoffman in the fourth. <laughs> just Rob Thompson masterclass. <laughs> yeah. Masterclass. Only at a masterclass in games uh, you know, four and five against the Uh Third most important Philly, I think, is is actually Alec Baum. Like I don't know where we're at with Alec Baum because like, will he ever hit for power ever ever ever? Him having twenty home runs last year feels like a fluke. Shocking. I know. Um, well, it's funny because remember, like spring training, bulked up, uh, start of the season, spring training, then the start of the season, hitting tank shot, I know. and then he went like, two months at home or whatever. Whether I know. Without many, you know. But he, like, he ended the year last year as the cleanup hitter. Mm-hmm. He might be there on opening day again. Look, so that's an interesting one because. I think you have three, uh, assuming they they put Harper third. Yeah, and, put, and have a lefty at the top of the line, but it's not Turner, you know, and he wants to write lefty thing. Then it comes down to, to three options. You're either doing JT, you're doing Cassie, or you're doing Bohm there. Yeah. And I think Bohm makes the most sense from the sense that he puts the bat on the ball the most. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I think Cassianos is not the clear. I think it's either JT or Bohm in the sense that you need someone there who's going to put the bat on the ball a little more consistently. But I look, I think by the end of the season last year, JT was the guy I counted on. I trusted the most of those three by the end of the season. Um, so I, I think it'll be one of those two. Who could forget Bohm's home run in game seven? <laughs> well, Who especially after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who could forget? I did until you said that. I yeah. Know. Totally, um, totally, totally forgot it. So yeah, just like, uh, and defense is good at third base last year. Maybe focus so much on that. I just, I'm, I'm curious. He was I, great he's, defensively he's last clo- year. I mean, it's, it's close to extension time for him. Like, do they want to oh, extend wow. Alec Bohm? And it's, it's a legitimate question. It's not a no brainer. Um, I like Alec Bohm a lot. I just, I, I, We'll see what they do. What does he have? Two more years of ARB left? Three more years? I think it's th- he two came or up three. In Twenty, right? So, so, so he's got three more years of ARB left. Yeah. So let's, it's getting there. It's getting there. So that's gonna be an interesting one. I think he's really important. Uh, four is Nola. Like we know what Wheeler is gonna be. Were the were the adjustments in the postseason real, or were they not? And I feel good about Nola heading into the year because I think contract stuff settled he's here for life he can just calm down and go out and do his thing and maybe the adjustments are real maybe that he you know buys into to because he's not never been a, a huge analytic guy maybe this has him buying in more mm-hmm. i have no idea so nola gets the contract can he live up to that and you know i, I he's he's huge because you have wheeler but the only way they're winning 90 plus games i agree they have a legit two and they need Nola to be a six. No doubt. And, I, you know, I'm I'm very bullish on Aaron Nola's season. We'll make our season prediction all that oh. coming up. But I would expect a bold prediction from me on Nola. I'm, I'm really, really, Ooh. really bullish on Aaron Nola's year. Yeah. What a tease. What a mm-hmm. tease. What That's tease. a tease. Uh, and the last one is Turner. Ah, your Ask boy. Is the, <laughs> your is, guy. Are we going to get an MVP type year yeah. from Turner? Can we like, get a full season? Can we get it? Can I? Can we get a top 10 MVP yeah. vote for I mean, for we Turner should. We should. Like, again, with the contract, we should. That, that is the type of player he should be considering what he got paid for, especially now in these early years of the contract Correct. when you really need to make hay. And it's so funny because, like, 
Boehm has turned into a guy I trust more defensively than Turner. It's unbelievable. Can he, can he bounce back defensively? Because that's the really only hole defensively they have right now. Even Cassianos. Who would have thunk it? Two straight they're, years they're down only, there, man. Their only hole defensively is Trey Turner? Yeah. What? Yeah. So yeah. They had, what, 26 errors it, last it's year? It's unbelievable. Like and and look, Dombrowski did make it a point when they were talking about the Ross thing and Schwarber and all that. Like, they care about defense. They now. do. Like, they really, that, that has been a big organizational change. The whole defense doesn't matter. More homers. It does. It does. Yeah. Who would have thunk it? Quite disappointing by Dave Dombrowski. Yeah, we learned that lesson both in both baseball and football. Defense yeah. matters, yeah. turns out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, I just I think Turner's, it's a Turner's, a, Turner's a big one. Like, are we gonna get an MVP year from Turner, or is it gonna be two seventy five to eight? It won't be as bad as it was to begin the to be, until August fourth um, of last year. But can we get? Is it is it gonna be a two seventy five two eighty year with twenty some home runs? Or is it three hundred with three fifteen to three thirty with twenty five plus? Three fifteen to three thirty would be no. nice. <laughs> I'll take three hundred. I'll be good. Does Stott bat three hundred this year? No, but I bet he bats. Ooh. I'm gonna say two ninety four. Cooking like two ninety four. I'm saying it's close. If he, didn't, if he didn't essentially not feel like he didn't get a hit for September, if that was what it was. I mean, he was batting three hundred six or something when <sighs> September started. I can't wait for for thirty. Ah, oh, Stotty. Stotty. He, he he would be very high on my list of players. I'm most excited to watch this year. I agree with you. I gotta be honest, buddy. I'm excited to see them all. I know. Like, I know. You're asking the wrong guy. You're asking the wrong. Yeah, just uh, Bryce at first for the year. Just a full season of Bryce Harper. Yeah. Like start the year at first. That's yeah. gonna be exciting. It is funny how like Reese was so bad at playing first base and Bryce. The, the Bri- yeah, in like a, like, like that. <laughs> Again, it, his first game is better than Reese ever was. Immediately, <laughs> unbelievable. Um. Yeah. So that's that's my top five. It's great stuff. I love it. Thank you. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, Jimmy Williams passed away, which is yeah, a shame. Yeah, it's a shame. Big uh, 08 Phillies guy. Yep, yep. Um, great bench Just coach. Just a for- baseball man. Baseball guy. Jimmy Williams. Baseball yep. guy. So that was, that was a shame. Plus the see. rare J-I-M-Y. I know. Rarely see it. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, the City Connect jerseys look horrible. And Dude, I'm- what a disaster. Like, they look like Union jerseys. Why do, why do we do this? What are we doing here? What were we're we- so, uh, inside, we So, inside baseball or inside baseball guys text thread, our thread with Elliot, uh, Elliot sent us those when they leaked. And Jack and I were both like, this is horrible. And Elliot, of course, was like, I like them. Of course. <laughs> they're great. They're, great. they're, they're horrible. They're, they're elite. Like, they are, they are trash. Like, they are about as bad. I just don't know. Like, yeah. Who is the City Connect for? It's, a uni- it's like a union. It looks like a union shirt. Like, what are we doing here? I'm just, you know. No one cares. Sorry. Sorry who? Are you, who are you apologizing? Yeah, you, I'm sure someone was. Oh, the, the union. union. Yeah, oh, I'm the, sorry. The, the no one cares. Team. Yes. They don't, but they look like the one, like the one union. Jersey. Yeah, they look the like the one main jersey. Yeah, the union main jersey the main is cool. Kit. The main, main kit, kit they wear is, is yeah. cool. It's cool. Um, it's a bad city connect. And, and and my final thing is not baseball related, but I wanted to bring it up with you Ooh. because I've been it's been on my mind for the last couple of days. Love this. Like, is there some like does anyone write good music when they enter Ooh. like their forties? That's a good take, right? Like, here. I feel yeah. like you're is, right. Is there any like everyone just? Write stops all writing 20s, stuff, yeah. And then they perform it all their thirties, and by forties, it's like because yeah, like, no one's ever like, oh, I can't wait to hear the new whatever. No, guy it's, that was you're, it's a great point. There are not that many musicians. I mean, like the Stones did; they had songs into their forties and stuff. Like they had some good albums in the eighties and stuff like that. I would say, um, but not really like rare. I mean, Fish obviously still pumping out new yeah, music. That's great, you know. <laughs> no, they don't. The <laughs> new music, new albums. Um, like it's just, it's just, but they're older, so it's better. I'm with you. It's, uh, it's just so funny. Like, I've never, well, that's why it was such a big deal at the Grammys. They're like, Billy Joel actually wrote a new song for the first time in 40 exactly. years. They didn't yeah. write it. Yeah. You didn't even write it. They wow. performed a new song for the first time in 40 years, whatever, 30 years. Taylor, Taylor's going to be an interesting test. That yeah, she is. She pumps stuff out, man. She's, she's 34, interesting. I yeah, believe. Yeah, she's heading in that direction. Does she, does she hold up through her 40s with making new music? I mean, there have been people. Like Bob Dylan. Like, there are older people. Like, Prince wrote until he died. Like, there are people. Did they, they have a hit? I think they did. I mean, some some hits. Well, just, sure. it's just, I guess it's what made me think of it is But it's like, rare. It's a great point. I've been listening to uh, uh, this guy named Wyatt Flores. And he's like 24. He's writing about like heartbreak and all this. Like, and I and I figured out his age. I'm like, well, what do you know? Yeah, you know what You're I mean. Me. And then and then someone pointed out, it's like, well, I mean, like McCartney wrote "Let It Be" at 27. That's true. So you know, it's just it's just like yeah. no, everyone just like puts it all in their 20s, and then after that, just yeah, what happens? Happens. If you had asked me what new artist am I listening to, some guy named Wyatt would have been like my third or fourth guess. It would have been a pretty high guess. A guy named Wyatt. Wyatt. It's not a very country music sounding guy. Music, country music. 
Uh, no, it's 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 more like the, I don't know, Americana. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because not country, but it's it. You would say it's country. You would say it's country. I like folk. I like folk music. All right, well, listen. Okay. Listen, I, I, big Jim Croce guy. <sighs> love, Jim love Jim. There you go. Love Jim Croce. We, um, yeah. Listen. Do you want to make the admission on the pod that you made to me through text that was uh, really made my month? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Please. Yes. Uh, I don't know because I might offend the. I just. I'm not a big fan of. I, the Grateful Dead as a band, not bad. Thank you. The, Welcome the, aboard. <laughs> Welcome perfect. aboard. You finally listen to a little music and you're like, oh, this doesn't suck. Yeah, okay. It's good. just everything around the Grateful Dead. <laughs> yeah, I get that. The, the, yeah. the scene. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Not yours. Believe it or not, not my scene. <laughs> it's far from your scene yeah, to no. possibly be. <laughs> Jack walking around like, what, what, oh, does where am I? what is where happening? Am I? Where Save am me. I? So, Thank you. Grateful Dead, not bad. Okay, so good. John Mayer maybe didn't put them on the map. Well, plays their music. In- enthusiastically. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. You got anything else? Pitchers and catchers, baby. Damn. Um, so next time we do... Wait, oh, is that right? Yeah, next yeah. time. Next time we do a pod... Well, truck day is tomorrow. Yeah, pitchers and catchers will be there. Hell yeah. I will watch. I believe I'll be able to finish every yearbook before pitchers and catchers. No, you didn't. No, I, I probably will be. I'll be. I haven't done it yet. I'm on my track. So... I do Saturday. What do you mean every yearbook? When you say every well, yearbook, like is it? Well, 2018 on. <laughs> All right, that's better. I think you're about to I go don't back think to I'm 2000 watch... and just, you know. No, I don't think I'm going to watch 2020. Okay, so the, this this era, like, for, start yes. 19. Start with Harper. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, start well, with 19. I, I had to finish 2018. <laughs> I, had to, I had to remember it all. Had to, the operative term. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I, I, and it did bring back the memory of <laughs> sitting in Costa Rica on our oh, honey, I remember you. Yes, <laughs> watching yeah. Scherzer versus Nola. Yeah, on a chair. That's worth it. That's a good point. I forgot. Twenty eighteen Nola, buddy. That was a year, it was, buddy. That struck out Mookie in the All Star game. Dominated at Fenway. Maybe twenty twenty four is gonna be similar. I don't know. I'm just saying. All right. It was good talking real baseball. Yeah, that was good. I feel like that's the most Phillies we've actually talked. Even though there were large just stretches take, there, where we just didn't cut out the Tucker portion. <laughs> no, which no, Not that was you, the, that the, was the boy, best part. The, the, the best portion of the bot easily. Five minutes on who's your go to yeah. Tucker. It's it great else stuff. Is pretty good. Justin guy. Tucker. That's a good Never one. Never said Justin That's Tucker. Good, there we Justin go. Justin Tuck? No, it does not. <laughs> no, no, it's different. Count. <laughs> it doesn't count. That's good. All right. Do the Tuck. Yeah. You saw the Lamb Uh, The Tuck rule. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I like how you moved right past the Sansa Lambs. Do the well, Tuck. That was good. Yeah, because I almost made a really dumb comment. Oh, good. And I was going to say, oh, the Tuck push. And then I realized it's the Tush push. Ah. Uh- <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got nothing else. Ross Tucker should take that. No, yeah, he should. Yeah, the tug push. The tug push. I like that. It doesn't flow as well. As no, it doesn't. It or not. All right. Uh, we'll be back next week.